Why is promoting Christian unity so very important? Well, in the few minutes I have left, let me give you three um, comments about why I think it's so important. Uh, First of all, it's about the very nature of who God is. You see, the Trinity reflects both diversity and oneness. Three persons in one, diversity but oneness. You see, the power of our unity is not found in that we're all the same, but is found in our diversity. Because if we were all the same, it would be really easy to be unified. But the fact that we are different, come from different traditions and different places, different genders, different ethnicities, the fact that we can be together is a powerful demonstration of the very nature of who God is. Secondly, it's about the very nature of the gospel. The gospel is about reconciliation, that we can be reconciled to God through what Christ did, but we can also be uh, reconciled to humanity, to people around us, and we're reconciled to creation. See, the gospel is about reconciliation, and we as followers of Jesus need to be on the forefront of peace and reconciliation in the world. I've been traveling a lot to the Middle East and other parts where of the world where there's a lot of conflict. Why? Because we have to be on the front edge of bringing this message of peace and reconciliation in the world. And thirdly, it's about the mission of the church. We're reminded in John's Gospel 17 where Jesus prayed for us as he looked forward to this moment in time and he prayed that we might be united. We would be together. We would be one. Why? So that the world may know him. But so often the church appears fractured and disconnected. But the power of that message that we're together is is about really what the mission of the church is all about. And you'll find in your, your bulletin some practical ways of of how we can respond to individuals, how we, how we can live out uh, spending more time on the evidence of grace in people's lives than pondering on their sins and weaknesses. We can meditate on the many commands that we're, we're commanded to love one another. We can spend more time considering areas of agreement than disagreement. We need to think about how peaceful God is and how we can reflect them. We need to count the cost of disunity and what that does to the gospel message. We need to be first on seeking peace and reconciliation. And ultimately, we need to pursue humility, realizing we don't have all the answers. We don't have all the truth wrapped up in ourselves. And as I close, I close with a quote from one of the people who was a mentor in my life, uh, uh, John Stott. Uh, John, the great Anglican minister, he wrote this. He said, It is simply impossible with any shred of Christian integrity to go on proclaiming that Jesus by his cross has abolished the old divisions and created a new single humanity of love, while at the same time we are contradicting our message by tolerating racial or social or other barriers within our church fellowship. Powerful words. And I conclude with this of what he said. And he says, I wonder if anything is more urgent today then that the church should be and should be seen to be what by God's purpose and Christ's achievement already is a single humanity, a model of human community, a family of reconciled brothers and sisters who love their father and love each other, the evident dwelling place of God by the Spirit. Only then will the world believe in Christ as peacemaker. Only then will God receive the glory due to his name.